just assume that people know the distinct difference between aid effectiveness and development effectiveness. And what I said in there um, is that this whole framework for CSO development effectiveness asserts that aid effectiveness is premised on development effectiveness. And by that we mean that development effectiveness is about impact, it's about development outcome, whereas the whole discussion on aid, particularly with donors, has been around aid modalities. You know, are we sure that this is any different to what donors, for an example, you know, have been doing, looking at different actors, bringing CSOs, but haven't CSOs become donors as well? Um, and that's a good reminder um, in that while we have been able to mobilize and catalyze and propel uh, a global process of civil society actors, um, we need to be absolutely sure that this development framework, the CSO development effectiveness framework, does link to those that matter the most. Um, and in fact, that is the underlying uh, philosophy that this framework is about, in the first instance, holding ourselves um, as CSO actors accountable to the people we serve, um, and also holding ourselves, and, and it's a mechanism, because while we say we work for communities, we work with communities, there really isn't, and we've had to admit in this process, there isn't a mechanism, um, particularly internationally, that we can hold each other accountable. That's the challenge of post-Busan. Um, we have developed this framework uh, in response to the challenge that came from Accra, where we were um, acknowledged as development actors in our own right, but we were also given the challenge to address our own accountability. So developing this framework and the production, the publication of it is, is only the beginning, and that's been widely acknowledged um, through the open forum process. So essentially, the challenge of taking this down to the grassroots or to the communities that, that uh, contributed to this, we are right now in discussions about post Busan. But open forum has largely been a process. To actually embed this requires looking at existing national organizations who have membership at the community level. In the Pacific, where I come from, for an example, Piango is a regional platform of national umbrella organizations. We are looking to um, take this framework and mobilize it, socialize it with our national umbrella organizations and looking to see how we can support them so that they can then work with it with their member organizations at the community level. Firstly, is to familiarize themselves, to know about the Istanbul principles. They're going to know about the framework and take the, um, the, 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 the framework back to their respective organizations and um, market that, or convince the organizations that this is a global consensus um, to begin to apply within their organizations. And, um, that's what the open forum, those of us who are involved in leading um, the, the process are, are looking to um, identify organizations who want to come on board with the process. But to take that framework, um, look at it, apply it, endorse it, and, and, and use that to look at your own organization's work, look at how civil society, and become part of a global process where we're working off.